This is not clickbait. We are officially selling our RV. This has been a very difficult decision for us. We have spent weeks going back and forth as to whether or not this was the right move. Shed tears. <laughs> we really have had such a hard time with this, but an opportunity has presented itself for us to move into a new RV. Let's show you around inside. We added shoe storage right at the front entrance and a hook so you can hang your hats and your jackets. So the first thing you see when you walk into the RV is the kitchen. We did keep a few things stock in here because they were just good enough not to bother upgrading, like the two burner propane stove. We also kept the convection microwave. It's like a half time, so it cooks stuff super fast. Never used it. Love the convection though. Baked bread in here all the time and pizzas. Also the countertop color, it is a Corian and we loved it. It went with the rest of the colors of the decor that we chose. The first of many upgrades in the kitchen that we've done that you would notice is probably the cabinet color. This is called Dash of Curry. Other upgrades we've done in the kitchen is stainless steel sink. We put in an in-counter soap dispenser, so that's one less thing we have to move around whenever we pack up the RV on moving days, as well as a stainless steel faucet that has a spray hose so you can rinse the sink out way easy. Backsplash is another thing that I'm super proud of because I did it myself. It's peel and stick tile. It was a fun geometric shape. We wanted to throw some other textures rather than straight lines. And I think it turned out very nicely and it is also held up. Picked this up in Mexico. Not this, but this habit of keeping spare drinking water and not drinking the water out of the tanks. Storage is always a concern in our RV. This is a tiny kitchen and we were very concerned that we would not be able to fit all of our cookware gadgets in here, but you'll be shocked at how much we can fit in here. We use the top two cabinets above for storing our plates. We also have all of our coffee equipment up there. Next to it is where we store our cups. We ended up getting like sock holders or tie holders, and that kind of keeps all of our cups from jangling and jingling as we drive down the road. Under the sink, we have a few cleaning supply items, and that's where we keep our pans and a strainer, as well as our cutting boards. And then we have three drawers. The top one we use for our knives, as well as our spoons and spatulas and then below is our huge massive spice rack we have so many spices it's a little ridiculous but I love that they have a dedicated drawer and the bottom is kind of like a catch-all it's where we keep our extra tea towels we have enough room for a strainer we have pots pans this is where we keep our forks we have a salad spinner we actually keep extra trash bags up there as well the bottom drawer is a little bit more shallow than the top drawer so we can't fit as much it's where we keep our tea kettle as well as our French press when we're on the road and then we also have a few Mixing bowls. bowls. Yeah, for Dennis's bread and such. On the other side, we have our fridge. It's a separate fridge freezer, which we love. We're able to stock up for about a full week of groceries in the fridge. Dennis added fridge fin fans inside, which helps keep the refrigerator running optimally. This is where the pantry originally ended, but we've done, I think, a fabulous job extending the pantry. We knew we wanted a little bit more space for our stuff, and since we love cooking and have so many ingredients with us, we the space has been absolutely invaluable. We have two full doors for our pantry. We keep our Instapot, we have our blender, all of our oils, chocolates, we're obsessed with chocolates, <laughs> and then all of our alcohol kind of stays here. This pantry is full of food. To make it easy for ourselves, we bought these bins to help us pull out. We kind of organize, this is like our baking section. This is like flowers, and then on the bottom is our snacks. Up here is grains and staples for cooking, so. It is a lot of space. We also have our La Crusette back there, how he bakes his bread, so. So there we go. Wow. <laughs> That's how much space yeah, that has. That's a lot, it's super deep. The refrigerator is a gas propane and electric option, so whenever you need, you can just switch it to propane if you're boondocking or not plugged in, or you can keep it on electric if you are hooked up. And then above the refrigerator area and pantry is where all of the operational panels are. It's where we have our inverter control buttons, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's where you can check your water. It's where you can check your tanks, although I will say those buttons are pretty useless. <laughs> we have propane and we have an electric water heater. So you have the option to do both there and the water pump. This is also where you turn your generator on and push the slide in or out. The couch that came stock with the RV was terrible. Not only was it heavy and ugly, but it was a pull-out couch that you could only use if the slide was out fully and it was a blow-up mattress. So it had to go, it was the first thing we replaced. 
We replaced it with an Ikea couch that had storage. So we got custom cushions put on top. This side is my closet. The center we use for extra storage. It's where we keep things like cat litter or cat food. It's where we have our extra bedding, just kind of miscellaneous stuff. And then Dennis's closet is on the right side. And we use the Ikea kind of cubes to help organize all of our different clothing so that we can kind of quickly pull whatever we need from underneath. When we got the cushions custom made, those are not cheap by the way. <laughs> we really wanted to make sure that they would last. So we ended up going with two different foam densities. The bottom one is nice and firm. It makes it so that whenever you're sitting, you won't sink into the couch or feel it. And it's been two years and these have held up extremely well. It's also really comfortable for when we have guests. We have had my mom come visit a few times and my niece sleep over. <laughs> So they have a nice cushy bed for when they're here. And then the backs are a little bit softer, so you kind of sink back into them in a lounge a little bit more comfortably. We ordered custom shades from Home Depot that are blackout curtains. So they have a white material behind them that blocks out the light, which is so nice. The original ones were like that flimsy accordion style. They had the balances, they were, they were awful. The shades that are above the couch and the desk are zero gravity. So you can just use your two fingers or your hand to pull them up or down. There's no strings attached. The curtains that are in the bathroom and in the kitchen area do have strings, but I love that. So easy to put up or down. <laughs> The kitchen and the living room are in a full wall slide, which is something that we love about this model of the Fleetwood Pulse. Pulses are rare to begin with. They didn't make a ton of these Class C RVs, and to have a full wall slide is really special. But what we love the most is that you don't have to have the slide out to use all aspects of the RV. We still have access to our bed, we can cook, we can hang out on the couch, even if the slide is in, which is really helpful if you're in bad weather conditions there's been times where we're kind of like a little more stealth camping in places we may not supposed to be camping. It just makes it look a little more incognito when the slide is in. People don't assume that you're sleeping in there. We love that the RV is fully functional whether the slide is in or out. One of the overhead cabinets above the couch is used for extra pantry storage, and we use the other one for miscellaneous stuff, Dennis's hats, hammocks, binoculars. We also have an outlet over here so you can charge things, and there is another outlet over in the kitchen area of the slide. So being that we're digital nomads and we live full time on the road, an office space was a must have, non-negotiable. Uh, luckily, there wasn't much over here when we bought Maggie, except for an old crusty recliner and this like leaf table that came out of the wall, and it left us a giant blank space space to create a multi-purpose space that doubles as a desk, a dining area, and an entertainment center. We have a Samsung 32-inch smart TV built into the desk so it actually televates up and down so you don't have to see a big black square whenever you're not watching TV all day. A Samsung sound bar with subwoofer and a DVD player because when you're out in the woods and you don't have cell service connectivity, you can't stream anything. So that leads me to an upgrade that we added since we've done the original tour video, which is a smaller inverter hidden over here on this back wall of the desk. Uh, that's a 300 watt pure scene inverter and it powers everything to do with the entertainment system. That way we don't have to turn on the large inverter just to power these low wattage items. These two little drawers, one's your stationary drawer, just like any typical office. Underneath we have a laser printer and a pull out filing cabinet. And over here we actually have another 120 outlet that's inverted by the inverter whenever you have that on and a direct 12 volt source for charging cell phones and laptops. Still within the desk area, I'm gonna show you more of the off-grid setup. Behind this custom grate here is the 2000 watt Ames Pure Scene Inverter Charger. When we do have shore power, this is what charges the batteries instead of the old school converter that came with the RV. And it charges the batteries at 70 amps per hour. It gives you 2000 watts worth of usable juice from our battery bank of 300 amp hours of usable lithium ion. Thank you, Renegy. Back behind this access panel, we have the rest of the heart and soul of the off-grid electrical system. Originally, we just started out with the Ames 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller. We've since expanded and added a second charge system. We got the Victron 30 amp DC to DC chassis charger. What that does is it actually connects to the starter battery in the Sprinter, and whenever we're driving and the engine is running, it will send 30 amps worth of charge to the house batteries while we are underway, which has been extra nice because once we reach a boondocking location, we're usually completely full 
and then the solar doesn't have to work as hard to bring us up to full charge. It can just keep us there. Another new addition is the Victron Smart Shunt. That's been a game changer because we didn't have a battery monitoring system before that, and I love that little thing. The Victron app on your phone will show you charge currents going in, loads coming out, and it will evaluate your current usage and give you a time frame of battery life left at your current consumption rate. That's totally taking the guesswork out of like, how much battery life do we actually have? You know, should we run the generator? Should we not run the generator? I don't know, let's just do it anyway. All that guesswork is gone, and it's actually showed us that we probably use less energy than we thought we did. At the back of the RV is where you'll find the bathroom. It's a full three-piece bathroom, meaning we have a separate sink, shower, and toilet. It's also where you'll find the hanging closet. We have loads of stuff in there. It's kind of like a catch-all for storage. There's a little divot in the back. It's where we keep our backup toilet paper, paper towels. Dennis has installed some hooks for me to have my bags hanging there, which has been really nice. And then on the other side of the closet, we've added a shoe rack. So that's where I keep my hair accessories, a few of my shoes that don't hang over by the entryway of the door. And then of course we have some space for all of our hanging clothes that we don't want possibly wrinkled or folded under the couch. Below the closet is our hamper. It's the perfect size. We can fit like almost two weeks of clothing in there. In the last video, a lot of people asked where we keep the litter box. We keep it in the shower whenever we're not using it. Whenever it's time to shower, we just put it out into the living space so we can shower. An upgrade in the bathroom from our last tour video is the Oxygenic shower head. It has an on off button while you're showering, not wasting water, having it flow, which is hugely important for boondocking, but it's really just good general practice. It used to be a two handle shower, meaning the hot and cold were separate, but we've upgraded that, making it into a single handle so you can get it to that perfect temperature nice and easy. We've also changed out the faucet in the sink area. There's ample storage in the medicine cabinet behind the mirror and there is loads of storage underneath the sink. We've added in a nice little organizing rack that allows us to keep our towels and then we can have things stacked on top so it really maximizes the space down there. The last upgrade we've made in the bathroom is the composting toilet. We went with the airhead composting toilet this time and we have loved it. And on the back of the door there are two drying racks is where we keep our towels. And that brings us to the very last room in the RV, which is the bedroom. We sleep in the bunk over the cab, which is the driver's area. We have a ladder that comes off. It just has hooks right here. And whenever we are moving into drive mode, we just pull it off and put it on top of the bed. Something that has changed since our last tour video is the addition of a breathable layer under the mattress. Whenever a mattress is on a platform that doesn't have any breathability, it can develop mold. We were starting to see evidence of mold, so we quickly rectified it. Dennis painted a mold killing primer and he added a planter riser, which protects decks from planters having wood rot underneath them. So it lets air move throughout underneath our mattress and keeps mold away. We upgraded our mattress right away. We absolutely love the mattress we went with. This is the second time we've used this mattress in an RV. This one is a memory foam and it is made for hot sleepers. So it's called Cool Gel and it helps keep the mattress cooler. It's also a company that uses no off gassing or nasty chemicals in their mattresses, which is really important to us. Definitely fits both of us nicely up there. It is a tight space, but it works. If you're two smaller people, it is more than enough space for sleeping. We changed out the hot lights from the halogen bulbs to LEDs. So now they use half the energy and they don't produce any heat at all. I also changed the AC cowling to add the dump feature that a lot of the modern ACs have in newer RVs because this is ducted, but sometimes if it gets super hot on a travel day, the ducts take way longer to cool the RV down than it would if you just open the vents and put it in dump mode. I also modified the old school crank up Batwing local TV antenna to instead hold our outdoor cell signal booster antenna, send it up and it, it puts it probably four feet higher than the RV roof. I also added a Sirocco 2 12 volt fan, which uses nothing for power. So we can have a little extra airflow in the bed area while we sleep on warm nights. So moving into the cab, Maggie has everything you would expect out of a basic Sprinter. She's got cruise control, five speed automatic transmission, which I usually drive in manual. That's one thing I'm gonna miss about Maggie and the Sprinter experience in general is the fact that this big knob feels like a manual transmission gear shift lever that makes this really fun to drive even though it's technically still an automatic the sprinters don't have like a tow haul so whenever you're going through the mountains or pulling grades just being able to have it stay in one gear for a little longer than it normally would seems to help out with the uh, gas mileage 
I've been averaging around 13 and a half miles per gallon, which I think is pretty good for a 25 foot class CRV. And the cab area has tons of storage. The chairs do not swivel, and I would not actually recommend installing a swivel chair. It, it can be done in here, but the thing is, is the floor, the transition from the cab to the living area is a little high. So I feel like, and one of the reasons why we never installed swivel chairs is if we did, you would turn around and you would be so low to the ground that your knees would be like super high while you're sitting in the swivel chair. And we can fit like six people in the living area comfortably, four on the couch and then two on the desk stools. So we've never really had a reason to even want swivel chairs. She's a 2010 Fleetwood Pulse on a 2008 Dodge Sprinter chassis. I've been jokingly calling her a Mirage for the last couple of weeks because a lot of people have noticed the Mercedes logo on the grill and the Dodge Ram on the steering wheel. And that's because Dodge branded the Mercedes Sprinters for a few years and then Mercedes took that line back over. Under the hood, it's got the three liter, six cylinder Mercedes diesel engine. And let me tell you, this little thing is a workhorse. She is 25 feet long and 11 and a half feet tall. We had the roof sprayed with RV Flex Armor. This has been the best upgrade we've done. You never have to worry about this roof again. We'll have a link to the video that we did about the install and why we chose Flex Armor in the first place. So go check that out. Now let's show you around the outside of Maggie. The bay underneath, directly behind the driver's side door is where the generator hangs out. It's a propane generator. It's the Cummins Onan RV QG 3600 and it, it does does the job for us. Honestly, with the 300 amp hours worth of lithium and the solar that we have, plus the chassis charger, we hardly ever turn this thing on, but it's there when you need it. This bay is the other side of the pass-through, and I have all of my tools, my drills, the five gallon bucket that we hold extra cocoa core so we can change the composting toilet out. What more could you ask for? It just, there's tons of stuff in here. I ripped off the wheel simulators because they were garbage. They were causing flats because of how they were mounted to the valve stem extensions. So I got rid of those. I put some rigid valve stem extensions in that make it really easy to check, check and fill your rear tires, especially with the dually, because otherwise neither one of them are very uh, accessible. Plus, as you can see, I blacked out the wheels and I think it looks way better than those ugly chrome simulators man beyond that maggie also has six brand new cooper ht3 tires with at the time that we're recording this video have around 2,000 miles on them the original modifications that we have loved that we did right off the bat were bilstein shocks up front and then agile off-road rv tuned fox shocks in the rear and let me tell you that made such a huge difference in the body roll and shake whenever you're going down the road or pulling out of a driveway that has a curb or something like that, it makes this thing ride so much better. All right, these two, this is where you have your sewer termination. This is the gray tank that you can see, and then the black tank kind of runs across the rear of the RV. I added a Valterra blade valve at the end because we don't technically use the black tank for black water because we don't make black water because of the composting toilet. If the gray tank gets full and we don't have a dump, we're out dry camping somewhere, I can open the gray valve, make sure that this valve is shut, open the black valve and then level the tanks to extend our stay without having to go run and dump at a dump station. You have your power cord and your generator connection for the power cord back here. Just above the power bay, you have your city water inlet and your cable TV, as well as an outdoor shower. The back of Maggie, we carry the X-Max 300 on the Moto Tote MTX. We've had this bike on the back of this RV for like two and a half years now. We did 11 months in Mexico carrying it this way. And it's been beautiful, man. I can't recommend a Moto Tote enough. We are also gonna be selling the X-Max, so if you're interested, if it's still available by the time we air this video, we might be able to work out a package deal if you want the RV and the scooter together. Also here on the back, you can see you have your usual RV suspects, a roof access ladder, and a reverse camera. Moving around to the campsite of Maggie, you'll see the Atwood water heater. It's a six gallon tank. It's also an aluminum tank, so you don't have to worry about changing out anode rods like you do with the Dometics. I've added a spray port, which has come in super handy. Anytime we've gone to the beach 
or any sandy area you could totally just hose off your feet or hose off the scooter. The bay underneath the water heater is where I keep our leveling blocks and some scooter goodies like the tie down straps and stuff like that for the moto tote and the cover for the scooter. Also, I can't get to it right now and I've actually never messed with any of this, but there's a bunch of fuses I think for the Sprinter chassis in here. So if you have lights go out or whatever, that can be found here as well as the low point winterizing drains for the water lines. One of the things that attracted us to Maggie right off the bat was the rear entry door. Most class C's have the door forward and that totally messes up the flow of the floor plan inside. It's unique and feels, feels cool. This is the vent for the refrigerator, gravity water fill, and the other side pass through bay. So we got our mat, we got our table, two giant camp chairs, a bocce ball set, Liz has an Adirondack up in the pass-through area. <laughs> what is this bay? So this bay, the next bay up that Liz can't remember what it is, is the propane bay. Oh yeah, 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 I, yep, you're right, I knew uh, that. Larger than a typical class C propane tank because of the propane generator. So with that said, if we have a full tank of propane and we're not running the generator, which is typical, a propane tank will last us, dude, I don't know. Month. Three, four months. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Buddy. Aside from the cats, the composting toilet will be going with us. It will not be staying with the RV. Obviously, it's already all set up for a composting toilet, so if that's something that you want to have installed, you can just purchase your own toilet. The vent and everything else is already there for you. Or we can install a normal water flush toilet in there for you. So just let us know if that's something that you're interested in. But many of the things that are in the RV can be included in the purchase. We really built the RV around those items, so we'd love to see them continue to live here if that is of interest to you. And as you can see from this video, Maggie really is a one-of-a-kind RV. We put so much time, effort, thought, and love into her. And we Sweat, blood, <laughs> tears. We'd really like to see her go to new owners that are gonna give her just as much care. Maggie is not the right RV for everyone. There are considerations we'd really like you to take seriously if you are interested in her. Make sure that you are comfortable with the bed and having to use a ladder to get up there. We don't suggest anyone over six feet just because of the bed size. It would also be great for someone who works on the road. The desk space truly is wonderful for digital nomads. So that is a major, major plus. It's gonna be really, really hard to say goodbye. Even just thinking about it, I'm starting to tear up a little bit right now. But I know this is just opening a new chapter of amazing experiences for us. Our V life is nowhere near over. We're just moving on, turning the page. Thank you so much for watching. If you can share this video with someone who might be interested in purchasing the RV, it would really be helpful for our channel. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.